So, but I, I find um, Chrissy's story quite interesting because it, when she came to, she said all she remembered was that she was 16 years old. You know, that she can, and, but what was it that helped? When, I mean, how does this happen to the human mind? The truth is that um, she, she, she gave a story that do happen a lot of times in the hospital and in setting that people don't understand. When you have um, essential hypertension, people don't really know. Because most of us don't go about checking Check. our blood pressure regularly. Then even checking our, doing our medical um, investigation just holistically, maybe once a year or twice a year, depending on you know, what it is, um, your money or maybe your company helping you. We don't do that. So our blood pressure went up. And then she collapsed. She went into coma. So what we normally call that is a transient ischemic attack, meaning that, you know, um, the blood pressure went and then she didn't go into unconsciousness for 20, 41 months. It was within 48, 48 hours. Within two days, yes. And then she, the body regulated itself. Like, I am too... And came back. Yes. Mm. Then why did the memory disappear? Good. So that is one of the causes of memory loss. It's a temporary thing. Gradually starts building back gradually. Some people, they may just wake up and everything comes back immediately. Why some people may even be permanent. So like she said, it has started coming back gradually. But she, made some, she said something very uh, important. She said she was 30, over 30, but she assumed she was 16. So the first question, if she comes to somebody like me, about, after knowing um, about daughter and every other thing, is that, why is this? What happened when, when she was 16? What is that thing she's holding? So she like went to a happy place. Mm. Where, where were you at 16? <laughs> university? I, uh, yeah, I think I was, yeah. I was in university then. Fresh man. Fresh, fresh man. man. <laughs> I was a very, very fresh jambito. <laughs> so she, she went to a comfortable zone, a happy place, where even if you are telling at that point that, no, you are over 30, you say, no, I'm going to take it one day at a time and okay. then gather the certain beauty. Well, that is Chrissy's story. But I found that, well, how did you manage to survive that two years? Because eventually you got your memory back. Yeah, after two years, it came back. You must have been released years. after 48 hours. Sorry? You must have been released from the hospital after yeah, 48 I was. hours. Yeah, I was. So you went home. I went you didn't home. Know I was daughter, giving you, drugs. Okay, you didn't no. know your son. You didn't know your kids. I didn't know anybody. I didn't even know my house. I didn't know the clothes. I had to even buy a new set of underwear because I, didn't, I, wasn't, sure. To wear your, yeah. I wasn't sure of anything there. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? And um, I had to survive on a, on a, on a cocktail of drugs. You know, I yeah, was giving definitely. some drugs. Ah, yeah. Definitely. So I had to take these drugs every blessed day. But I got tired of taking the drugs at one point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then I complained to the doctor. He said, okay, fine, let's chill. Because I, had to, I, I got this mobile um, blood, um, blood pressure um, monitor. And I, I noticed that for a while it was just normal. I said, okay, fine, can I stay off the drugs? He said, okay, yeah, why don't, let's try, let's see how it goes. Two days after, I went back. So was it related to back. childbirth? Could it have been postnatal? What we're thinking, is, what we're or thinking or? is that's possible. Because mm -hmm. when, after I had my child, I was supposed to have gone for a postnatal check. The day we went, they couldn't, for some reason, they couldn't find my file. And I, I was in a hurry, I needed to go somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, fine, I'm going to come back. I never did. But I, I kept, I, I was busy. So they might have noticed that blood pressure. They might have. If you had gone. gone they might have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think Possible. another reason, because one, what my husband was saying, why we were a bit relaxed was because after the first child, we didn't have any issue. Even with the second child, there was no problem. With antenatals, mm -hmm. my blood pressure was okay. I felt okay. I felt good, right? And um, I missed the postnatal um, examination, and I went back to my normal life. I even started a course. You know, so I was doing so many things at the same time. I wasn't resting. I was... Um, mm. Doctor was is nodding breast, her head. I was, I was breast pumping, you know, mm. and doing all that. And, and, and I need to point out something, right? One thing I've learned is a lot of us take a lot of things for granted. What I took for granted was my health. I didn't know. My body was giving me signs. Mm. Like, funnily enough, because even after my husband, my mom came visiting at, around that period, um, the Omugo part and everything. Because I remember I kept complaining I was tired. I was always tired. I was always having these dizzy spells or I have these flashing lights, you know, before my eyes. And the, what they were telling me, mm. I was still moving. What they said was, okay, you're just tired. You're doing too many mm. things. Why don't you ri lie down, rest? And for me, my way of resting was with a bottle of Coke. Ah, yeah. With a bottle of soda. Yes, yeah, yeah, a bottle of soda. So I would, I would hold it and that was it. I wouldn't take any painkillers. That was what I was taking. Okay, let me talk about this. If someone like her had this kind of thing, say, in 1970. 
she probably would have ended up on the streets, right? Possibility, because people wouldn't believe her. People wouldn't. They people would didn't believe you, right? That she was. No. She was faking it. It people, took a while for people. Exactly. To, and to then, um, depending on the setting, maybe she was not in an urban area. Maybe in a village setting. Of course, a lot of fingers would be pointed at different areas. Now uh, we call people witches. I'm witches. Just thinking, oh, mad people. Exactly. The witches. Somebody is doing her. Um, somebody. Did, and then she had a son. So it could be that oh, somebody is jealous of the fact that she has she a has son. Boy. So. <laughs> that would sum up those days but now she was in an urban area and this is she said very pertinent things a lot of warning signs that were so obvious but of course um she just felt that she was okay and that is life for all of us that is a lesson for everybody to learn when before any medical condition happened most of them they will it will show you your body will telling you this warning sign, the red flags. Like now she was having uh, blood vision, headaches, she was exhausted, she was still running. And to make things even worse, she was not taking soda, caffeinated. So kind of asleep also was, you know, affected. Yeah. And that is one thing about... Because I was breastfeeding yes, exactly. at night, so I wasn't... Bre nothing mother of a five-month-old baby, a boy who they suck a lot. Mm -hmm. So everything was a major so red now, flag. So now we know... What caused what happened to exactly. her? Exactly. The body does but shut now, down. You, what helped you get your memory back? And what are the lessons that you've taken away that you think people must learn? I think what helped me was an acceptance of where I was. You know why I asked that question? Because you can't publicly say, because it's a mental... It's a mental thing. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm trying to say. I think, as I said, a, 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 an acceptance of my situation. Because initially, I, I, didn't, I refused to believe I was in this situation. Mm -hmm. I had, I had lots of um, depression. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. lots of dark moments. I wanted to kill myself, I wanted to kill people. I was depressed, I was always throwing things, I was always in the mood, and um, I, felt, I felt hated, I, I didn't trust yes, anybody. anybody. Nobody, I was suspicious of everyone. Every word that comes out of your mouth, I look at you like, okay. Do you sleep on the same bed with your husband? I had to know, initially no, but mm. eventually, do you understand, I had to. And my son, my second son, at one point, there was something, that was the turning point for me, because I, I, there was no connection with me and them. Mm. You know, and I, th and I think they felt it because this was not the mommy that we know. But I couldn't do anything about it. But this particular moment and particular day, my second son came and hugged me and just said, Mama. That was the only thing he said. And he just twisted something in my brain. And I was like, okay, Chris, if not for anybody, for these kids, live your life. Yeah. And that was the turning point for me. And then I decided, okay, for the best way for me to be maternal, to feel a, a sort of connection to these kids is to baby. have another baby. <laughs> That so was a I good treatment. <laughs> I went all out. And then I got pregnant. And I had a girl. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I had a girl. And then the whole feeling just came rushing back. Really? Yes. I just felt this whole, for her You discussed this with your doctor. You were seeing a psychiatrist at that time. Uh, yeah, I was not a psychiatrist. Psychologist. <laughs> Psychologist. <laughs> You have to tell me the difference between the two. Mm. Yeah. No, you okay. So that... Yeah, so I was, but, you know, for a while, because my life was, my, my health status was pretty much just balanced. The only thing was just my memory. You know, so there was really no need for me to keep going and going and going and going, you know. But um, having the baby was also a good thing for the doctor because she said it might trigger something and maybe the memory will come rushing back. So they, what, what they advise is always try to put yourself in situations, familiar situations, yeah? And surround yourself with family members. Friends should come visit. Family members should be there. Let them keep saying happy moments in your life. Let them just keep talking about it. So maybe the memory will come back. But it didn't come back. You know, I, I remember when I told my mom about my pregnancy, when I said I was pregnant, she was like, oh my God, thank God. Maybe now, you know, the whole, tr the whole you know, the exertion, the pregnancy, the labor, maybe that's when the memory will come back. And the funny thing was, after I had my baby, that was the first thing she asked, can you remember me now? I'm like, uh, Your mom, eh? Uh, <laughs> so you didn't even remember. No, so can you remember me now? I'm like, no, but I have a baby girl. <laughs> that was what I said. So and when my memory came back, it was on a particular night. Um, I had an argument with my husband. Yeah, I had an argument with him. How old was so the baby? He, she was, um, that was in 2015. That was in 2015. She was practically a year plus, almost a year, yeah. So um, I had an argument with him, and that night I thought I was sleeping, but apparently I wasn't, you know? So I was on this other edge, edge of the bed, and there was, I had these flashing memories, you know? For, Started coming. I thought I was dreaming, right? But they looked too real to be dreams, and they were like moments in my life. I could actually see, it was like a movie. 
I pinched myself. I realized I was awake. I forgot the fight that I had with my husband. I just rushed, you know, to his own side of the bed and I tapped him. I started asking him questions. Did this happen at this time? At this time? At this time? He was like, goodness, can you remember? I said, yes, do you remember what happened that night? Do you remember what happened that night? <laughs> So your courier was forgotten? Yes, and he was very particular about that night because um, fingers were pointed at him that it's possible he must have led to what happened. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yes, wow. that it was possible. That's what you were having an argument about. No, no, no. We were uh, just married, married couples having mm -hmm. an argument. That was what happened. But, you know, even at the hospital, the doctor kept asking, was what there did an you argument? Do? Did you beat her? When they keep asking, I'm like, how will I know if there was an argument? I can't remember. And you know, he was the only one that had uh, dibs on the information. He was the only one that was giving everybody. And it was at a time in the night, you know, 12, 30. You should give him a husband that would. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so he was very particular about that. Do you remember what happened? That? Because I also had my suspicions. Because sometimes when we, I, I always bring that up. Mm. And I ah, say, you saw you didn't. Mm. And I, I, then I used to say things anyhow, because I'm like, I don't even remember you. So I'm mm. even doing you a favor. <laughs> like... Even if, you know, because there was no connection, really. Yeah. And I said one or two of those things. Kind so of you like, not told him, I remember that. I remember, yeah. Who was the first person you told? Your kids or? I told my mom. I told my mom first. And the first person I went to hug was my son. The first one. The first one. I just started crying because I, I could remember his name. I could remember everything. I just went to his room. My husband was like, no, don't wake him up. I said, no, I don't care. <laughs> so I'm so to the specialist about this now. 